Well, I started making the uh, adapter plate for the chuck. Um, not particularly happy that uh, there's, there's, the jaws are further out than I would like to see, but I'm taking it very easy. Um, I don't have a small enough boring bar to, to go in, and I don't have a big enough drill to make a decent sized hole, so I'm having to just tease it out as I go along. But um, it's quite satisfying in my finish is good. Um, so this is the, the the side that will mount to the spindle, and I'll use one of the spare spindles as a plug gauge to get the, the diameter right. And then um, I will drill the holes, uh, mount it on the spindle to finish the rest of the operations. Well, there's the first part done. I've got a really nice fit on the um, spindle. Um, and so now we can um, put it on the rotary table, drill and tap the three holes. Then I can bolt it to the spindle and do all the, the other ops to recreate this register for the chuck. On to the next part of the back plate manufacture. So this is a boss for the um, rotary table. The centre there picks up on the outside of this. And the OD is for that. So you know we're just turning, teasing this down until we get a really nice fit. And that will locate that blank on the rotary table so that we can drill the three holes to mount it to the spindle. So this is the setup for putting the holes in the back plate blank. First of all we have the MT2 taper which goes in there. That is held on by a, a threaded cap. N10, it will go all the way through. This is a, a very good fit on a machined end on the MT2 taper, and that is sized to be a very good fit on there. So when the rod comes all the way through, I can put a clamp on there. It, because I'm, a, I'm not milling anything, I'm just putting three holes in to start with. And that would be more than adequate to hold it while I drill those holes, as long as I don't go too mad. Now the end cap is tightly secured. And the stud is all the way through so now we put that bit on that's a nice fit there and I'll need some packing because I'm going to drill all the way through just to put that up and then that will clamp the whole thing down job done so now we're on the mill we just need to center that zero the DRO then we can actually start making holes using this very cool centering indicator um, I'm to, to, to get the center of the uh, spindle in line with the center of the rotary table I, I've locked the um, gib fore and aft and I've locked the, the gib that way um, so when I index out to get the PCD I will only be using this table. Uh, it does make a difference because there is a slight movement uh, when, when you tighten up the gibs. Um, uh, I know for a fact that this gib needs replacing on the top. There's nothing I can do about that until I get the replacement. There's just too much play, so you have to take that into account. But um, Yeah, that's 
pretty well centered. So we have a cunning plan. All of the chucks, that's the four jaw independent, the three jaw self centering and the collet chuck are capable of being mounted from the front. They all have the same 95 mil register and they, the, everything except the collet chuck has 108 PCD for the fixing holes, four for the four jaw, three for the three jaw, three for the collet chuck. The collet chuck unfortunately has an odd pitch circle diameter, it's 107 and they're tapped holes, but that's not a problem because I can just open those out to 8mm clearance and put them at the right PCD. So all of the chucks that I want to mount can be mounted using exactly the same fixings and the register. So rather than making separate um, backing plates for each, I can make one backing plate with a couple of redundant holes. Um, so those for the four jaw, those for the three jaw and the collet chuck. And Bob's your uncle. I find it useful to, um, to, to make a, a drawing first. Um, and the one thing I wanted to check was that I'd still be able to get access to the, the three holes that I'm going to drill now. They're the only holes I'm going to drill at this operation. Drill and tap them so that I can mount the 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 blank to the mill uh, to the lathe and complete the other side and make sure that register is a good fit. The final operation would be to put it back on the mill and drill the, the remaining holes. So now we've drilled and tapped the three holes and put the studs in. We can now finish the front. Uh, Face that off and put the 95mm register and turn the OD out to uh, 125. Um, then it's back on the rotary table to drill the holes for the chuck. There we have it, almost finished. I've marked the positions there with just a little bit of a, a grinding dot um, so that it goes back in the right position because that's where it's been machined. It's a, a very tight fit on this register, purposely. And what I'm going to do is when I take that off, I'm going to use some lapping paste and um, use one of the, the chucks to make sure it's a really, really good fit. Uh, so now it's uh, back onto the mill to drill the mounting holes. And we're done. I'm going to have to strip the lathe and um, clean all the bloody iron filings out from everywhere. So here we have it, the new back plate complete. This is the existing back plate that came with the chuck that came with the machine and that is mounted from the rear. This is the Pratt Bernard Precision Chuck, my four drawer independent chuck, and the ER32 Collet Chuck. These two can be mounted directly on there onto the front using these holes. I can use this as it is um, rear mounted using that, but I'm going to drill three clearance holes so that I can mount it from the front. That way um, this will remain on the machine pretty much permanently. The only reason I would take that off is if I wanted to use the, the face plate which has to be mounted directly um, to the spindle. All these chucks can be mounted on the front which is a lot easier than frigging around trying to get these damn things on that spindle and trying to get the nuts behind there.
lot of work making that but um, it, it should be pretty accurate because this is surface has been machined on the spindle so that takes out any errors um, that might be in the spindle job done comments been made about the shakiness of my videos for which I sincerely apologize um, I tried various uh, forms of stabilization in software I use KDN live uh, to, to edit the videos um, and it and it works to some extent unfortunately where you've got this sort of surface um, it produces some really weird artifacts uh, that make it it's just difficult to watch. It's hard enough anyway. As you as you move, the you get these artifacts uh, with the ribs. Um, the other thing I, I've got a, a camera which has got um, mechanical stabilisation, but it's too uh, delicate and expensive to to have in a workshop uh, with oil and stuff knocking around. Um, my tripod, I've tried, but it's that's probably the, the, the best solution um, going forward uh, I'm still experimenting I don't know I'm just trying to hold it the phone a little steadier anyway I am working on improving the quality of the video